Welcome to Ridge Life. I'm Tim, and today we're here at our log home on the ridge in West Tennessee, going to talk about internet. What do you do when you live out in the woods, no cable, no phone lines, what do you do for internet? You're limited on choices. We've chose one, and we're going to show you how it's working for us. We're going to compare it to some of those things like Starlink. You know, you all heard of Starlink, so let's do this. Of course, you could have a DSL or a phone line ran all the way out to your house by some of the, the phone providers, uh, but the, all that gets you is dial-up speed or DSL speeds, and, and, and that is not acceptable for, for us here on the Ridge. Uh, you could also use a cellular connection. You know, you could have a little a hot spot and uh, pay for all those gigabytes of usage, you know, and, and have them throttle you down. A lot of times, those cellular companies, when you're using a hot spot, once you reach a certain limit even if you're on unlimited they'll throttle you down to give you almost no speed try uploading a YouTube video when that happens so many choices out there so few things really worth it of course there's cable internet Xfinity Comcast is the uh, cable provider out here in our neck of the woods uh, but they wanted almost two thousand dollars to bring a cable all the way out to our property out here just to give us internet and then of course charge us who knows how much a monthly fee for that internet then of course the ultimate off-grid supply of internet is the satellite system you get your internet from way out in space get those those things orbiting earth and uh, of course, if you all have ever tried satellite internet, the upload is so slow. If, you, if you're a YouTube creator and you need to upload anything, or if you're a gamer and you're trying to play games, it is so slow. Then, of course, if you're downloading, which can be okay, uh, and, and a storm comes up, forget it. You've lost your internet connection. No more streaming Netflix. But guys, there's also that other satellite provider, the elephant in the room, Starlink. What about Starlink? Now, Starlink is being provided more and more around rural America. And I know several YouTube creators, friends of mine, that are using Starlink currently. So I'm definitely not going to be dissing Starlink today, but I do want to give you a, a viable alternative to it and tell you some of the things about Starlink that you may not know. Okay, now Starlink, you'll, you'll have a fixed antenna. Uh, there's two different kinds, actually one for RVing and one for a, a home. But either way, it's an antenna. And uh, the antenna has a little motor on it, and it can it self adjust to point to the uh, current satellite position. And uh, it, the, the, the speeds are truly broadband. You can get very, very good upload and download speed with uh, Starlink. Now, like HughesNet and Dish Network, DirecTV, all those type of things, um, totally different system it's working on, and you are much, much more limited than Starlink. So, Starlink is, is a better choice there for that. But, all my friends that are using Starlink, I see them doing something. They're clearing trees. They're clearing trees. They live out in the middle of the woods. They live out in the middle of the forest. Some people call it a forest. Uh, and they don't have direct a line of sight to their satellite. So they're clearing trees. You live out in the woods. You live out in the, in the boonies, and you're clearing trees. That's why I moved out to the woods, so I wouldn't have to clear trees. Um, because what they're seeing is really, really fast upload speeds, but they're losing connection. And then they'll get really, really fast uh, upload, download speeds, then they lose connection. For every 5, 10, 15 minutes, you're losing connection. And if you're a YouTuber and you're live streaming, or you're a gamer and you're live streaming, that is not acceptable. So to me, Starlink really isn't, you know, it's expensive. The, the, the initial setup, the initial uh, hardware you have to buy is expensive, five, six hundred dollars in some cases. And then, of course, the monthly fee, you know, can be pretty high. Um, but again, I'm not dissing Starlink. It, it is a good, good option um, if that's the, if the way you choose. But we didn't choose that way. And what we chose may work for you as well. What we chose is is fixed wireless internet. Now, uh, specifically, we chose AT&T fixed wireless internet is available in our, our neighborhood. And it is not cellular, it is not satellite, it is not cable, it is not DSL, and it is not dial-up. It's none of those things. It, really, it kind of uses a combination of a couple of them, and we'll get more into detail about that. But AT&T fixed wireless internet, what is it? What are the equipment uh, needs? We'll show you. So we have our utilities out here on the outside of our uh, log home on the back side. We've got a uh, tankless water heater. We've got our uh, AT&T fixed wireless antenna. And of course we have a, a package unit 
for uh, HVAC, uh, and you may be 100% off grid, no power, no, no nothing to your property, and you probably have a solar array or, or you're using wood stove and fans, whatever you're doing, um, you're gonna have to have electricity of some kind to power your internet, right? So whether you're using generator, solar, or you have uh, on-grid power to your house, uh, you may not want on-grid internet, you know, all the extra expense, the $2,000 for cable to be ran out there, all that stuff. So what we've chosen, again, is AT&T Fixed Wireless, and we've got this antenna, this, uh, this rectangle antenna mounted to the side of the house, and we can see how it's set up, and it's angled, angled, well, ours, guys, ours is angled right at trees. It's angled right at trees. How does that work, you know? Uh, I don't see a cell tower. And the satellite's way up there behind them clouds and storm and rain and wind. Uh, how does this work? Well, we'll get more into that in a second, but let's see some of the other uh, pieces of equipment needed for AT&T fixed wireless. All right, well, on the corner of our house, um, we've got a little box right here. It's a copper transition box from AT&T, and our antenna's right over there on the, uh, where the other utilities are on the back of the log home here. And what they did is they ran a cable through our crawl space to this transition box. And then from the transition box, it goes inside to the router. Coming up out of the floor from our crawl space, we've got a cable that AT&T ran for us, and it comes up to our wireless gateway up here. This wireless gateway provides very, very good coverage throughout our log home, first story, second story, and actually outside in the surrounding areas. So we've got our AT&T fixed wireless antenna right here. And during the installation, I actually uh, asked them if we could get it mounted up there on that dormer, pointing the same direction if we get a better signal. They said no, right where we've got it right there, uh, gave a, a max, max signal, so we're pretty happy with it. And again, both ways we're looking right through the trees. So what does AT&T fixed wireless look at? Now that you know the hardware as far as uh, what uh, it comes included in your AT&T fixed wireless, we've also talked about some of those other uh, systems you could use. Let's talk about how AT&T fixed wireless works. We'll go inside, run some speed tests, talk about setup, and we'll also talk about cost. Our fixed wireless antenna mounted to the side of our house points through the woods towards a cell tower. And you're like, Tim, you said it doesn't work on the cellular network. Well, it's not actually looking at the cellular transponder. There is a fixed wireless transponder on the cell tower to the southwest of our, of our house here. Now, it's pretty good little ways away, and it is below the tree line, so that line of sight isn't there. Now, line of sight does help with fixed wireless, you know, but it's not as severe as, as, as it is with uh, a satellite, you know, like uh, HughesNet or even Starlink, where you have to have that clear sky path. You know, even a cloud, a cloud can, can mess with those systems. So um, this works very, very well. We, uh, we had a couple issues when we first installed it, but it was transponder setup issues. It had nothing to do with uh, line of sight. Matter of fact, let's take the drone up and show you what our line of sight looks like. Initially, we contacted uh, AT&T to get our fixed wireless set up, did it all online and made the appointment. 5,648 days was our estimated installation date. That was the notification we had, 5,648 days. Uh, we pulled that up on the computer and went, say what? How, how could any, 5,000 days, how many years, 2036. It would be 2036 before we can get our AT&T fixed wireless installed. So obviously that was unacceptable. Now there is a $100 installation charge. There's no equipment fees. So they didn't charge us for any of the equipment. We don't pay, you know, all that stuff. But there was a $100 installation fee. Well, once we got it all straightened out with them and, you know, um, they said, okay, we'll waive the $100 installation fee since you had uh, to wait to 2036. Now, really, it was only like a week or so later, once we got it all straightened out, they came out 
and uh, that's when they installed the antenna. And I, again, I wanted it higher up on the dormer on the side of the house, but they said, no, you, you had a perfect signal down at the bottom there. And you saw how the drone, when the drone went up, you know, the, that tower is there and it's a good little ways away, but the trees definitely block it. So line of sight is not 100% needed. And those are thick green. Now we are just entering fall. We're at the end of summer here. We're just before fall. Some of the leaves are started to, to fall off a little bit. You saw how thick and green that was, but $100 installation fee waived. So at this point we have no cost and the equipment is in our house. So what, what are the limitations? What, what, are, what does the speed look like? Let's take a look. Before we get into running a speed test on the computer, let's run one on my iPhone. This is an iPhone 12, and I'm just running speed test. I'm gonna click go, and it's actually connecting to an, uh, a Comcast server. Um, let's see here, look at that. Look at that speed right there, guys. Can you see that? I am super, super here. That's the upload speed. And uh, so we're at 60, 63 megabytes per second. And uh, guys, they, they only say 10 megabytes per second up to 25 is average. So t they guarantee 10 megabytes per second, uh, average of 25. Now we're uploading at 13 megabytes per second. 13 guys, go 63.4 average uh, download, 13.2 average upload. This is here in the middle of the woods in West Tennessee. I'm super, super happy with that here on my phone. Let's run this test one more time. I turned off my speed test and had it uh, pick a different uh, uh, local t tower provider. And this is the AT&T internet. Again, AT&T internet is who I'm using. So let me click go. And uh, we're using AT&T wireless, obviously. And here we go. Okay, 35, 42, 40, 30, 40 Mbps. Look at there. So we're still even uh, having the, the speed test system select a different um, location. That, you know, the, that's the location that the uh, the, the data is going through, it's still, whoa, went up to 73.2 with AT&T Wireless, 73.2, and now we're uploading at 13.3 megabits per second. Guys, this is way better than 10 megabytes per second, 25 megabits per second average. This is Starlink speed, guys. For some of the people that live out in the woods, you know, some people are getting better on Starlink, but look at that. That was 13.1 upload. 73.2 download, amazing, amazing what this will do. Now let's run the same test from our laptop. I'm using Google here, I'm using Google Chrome. I've got a ThinkPad uh, Core i7 Intel um, computer here. And let's run the Google speed test, the one that comes up. And uh, click the button here. And we can see that uh, right off the bat, we're at 29, 30, 32 Mbps. Um, that's our download speed. Again, this is uh, using a different software, different hardware. Uh, on the phone, you saw how amazingly fast that was. Again, uh, they only say 10 Mbps guaranteed, 25 average. Uh, we're doing 12 on the upload, guys. So still 12 on the upload through the laptop here. So 41.1 download, 12.4 on the upload. Uh, I, I, I'm, this one came out of Atlanta. The latency was 63 milliseconds. I am super impressed with our fixed wireless um, um, response time, speed, and uh, the ability to, to get us on the internet. So we're only paying like $60 a month. Okay, no installation fee, that was waived for us. No hardware fee, we'd have to pay five, $600 up front. And we're paying about 50 to $60 a month for our internet. Now, the limitations we do have, we are on the 350 gigabyte plan. Now, uh, like at home with my cable, Comcast Xfinity at the uh, Ridge Farmhouse, now here at the log home, I've got uh, you know a terabyte, a thousand gigabyte uh, plan. And if you go over that, then they start charging you. Of course, you know, we've got 10 people on the internet and nine TVs and all that other kind of stuff, you know. So, but here at the log home, it's just Grandma Carol, you know, of course, occasionally will come over. So she streams her Netflix, streams her internet. Even with a several people in the house, 350 gig is a pretty good plan. So uh, we are very happy with it. She has never gone over it uh, unless she left uh, Blue Bloods playing 24 seven or something, you know, uh, uh, streaming. So, and which one time they said, hey, uh, you, you're higher than your normal usage. Well, it's because Blue Bloods was streaming 24 seven. Sorry, Grandma, I didn't mean to mention that. Uh, but again, 350 gigabyte plan, 50 to $60 a month, that is perfect for us. Um, but that is one of the differences between uh, your Starlink, you probably uh, will get a lot higher data. Now they don't throttle us. You start getting close to 350, they don't throttle us. We, I've been getting that same speed all the time. 
To say we're pleased with AT&T Fixed Wireless is definitely an understatement. Working great for us out here in the middle of nowhere, we didn't have to spend $2,000 running cable to our house, makes us very, very happy. Guys, I hope this video you found helpful. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. It's free. If you haven't already, I do appreciate it. Hit the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out. Share this video on all your social media. Get the word out. I do appreciate it. So until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life.